South Carolina 2015. For 45 years now, it has been the premier tournament in the sport of bass fishing. The Geico Bassmaster Classic, presented by GoPro. Second day of the Bassmaster Classic here on Lake Hartwell. Um, conditions are completely different. Today's a lot warmer. I think when we launched it was 31, so just below freezing. Yesterday it was 10 degrees. It's, it's been uh, surreal, really, you know. It's kind of like a continuation of uh, last year's Classic. Randy Howe! I'd love to do it again. I'd love to be a repeat winner. I've had about seven years to prepare for this. It meant a lot to win a Classic, too. But to win it in your hometown, in front of all the people that you know, well, I'm here to win. Second place means nothing. I've done this enough times where I know that you have to put yourself in a position to win. The Classic is what I want to win. All I want to do is qualify for the Classic. For me to take that trophy home and keep it in the home state, that'd be awesome. To give you a shot at winning it comes around one time a year. It is the hardest thing ever to qualify for. When you get one shot at it, three days, it's gone. Try and catch the five biggest bass I can tomorrow on the way, come across that stage and hoist that trophy. That's my job tomorrow. This is the Bassmasters Classic, ladies and gentlemen, Lake Hartwell, 2015, and we are ready to get the show started. And I hope that I can put on a show for you today. You heard the guys, three days, one job, just win because you never know when you'll be back to the classic again. Welcome to the Toyota Bassmaster Studios. I'm Tommy Sanders along with Mark Zona and Z. Ever since, especially we started doing this classic in the wintertime, it's often been a tale of three completely different days in terms of character. Is that what we have that here? That is definitely the case right now. If you really look at day number one, as tough as it was, as cold as it was, these guys caught them. Yeah. They caught them in a big way. But the hardest thing about Lake Hartwell, these fish pack up and they roll. They disappear. And I guarantee you, Somebody in our top 10 will be affected from the change in this weather. Guaranteed, this weather will destroy somebody in this classic. All right, the one who did best on day number one, Dean Rojas with Robbie Floyd at the takeoff. The title from Lake Havasu City, Arizona, Dean the Machine Rojas. How does it feel to be the day one leader of the Bassmaster Classic, a guy who's known for his frog fishing, his sight fishing, but yet you're <laughs> killing them softly with a shaky head? Yeah, you know, it's it's awesome uh, leading the first day of the Bassmasters Classic. It's, it's something you always dream about. And, uh, you know, I slept like a baby last night. I'm really relaxed. Uh, I, I'm excited in, internally, you know, but uh, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And, and, I, and I just want to execute everything I can at 100%. A weather change a little different. It's warmer today, more overcast. Will that help or hurt your bite? Uh, I think it's going to help. I, I, I don't really f foresee it changing anything. I mean, we already saw the worst of it la yesterday, I felt, with uh, the high skies and really cold temperatures, and they bit really good. So I'm excited about today. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> Dean Rojas, the day one leader of the Bassmaster Classic. It's been since 2011 since he's won a BASS event. Warmer on this all-important day two, that's for sure. Day two important for a lot of reasons. It is moving day. You put yourself in position today. The full field of 56 is fishing today, but only 25 will emerge. Leaders like fifth place Randy Howell in pretty good shape right now. Best way to put it in our Yamaha Unlock the Lake is this day number one of this classic was dominated on the lower end. The only angler that was not focusing on mid lake and south would have been Randy Howell, who was fishing way up the Seneca River, but anglers like Mike Iaconelli, Skeet Reese, Casey Ashley, Brett Height, and Dean Rojas, all concentrated near the dam. This full field we're talking about on day one was limited to just six and a half hours fishing. The day didn't start until 8.30 instead of 7 o'clock because of the weather. They'll have more time today. Casey Ashley said there's definitely a window of opportunity, generally this time of year. That's the case on any lake, especially in the southeast. The fish just bite, and they bite quick in the first hour and a half of fishing. Casey Ashley said it's not a numbers deal in this tournament right now. He is way more focused on the species on the end of his line. You've got to catch largemouth to win. But largemouth, they, they actually bite better early. I don't care how cold it is. Uh, I don't care if they're shallow or deep or whatever. You, you've got to be in your best places, you know, from the get-go. There he is.
Don't you do it. That's a good fish too. Yeah, real good fish. That's the kind we need right there. Three pounder right there, baby. If we get us five of them today, we can go to work. Three pounder in the box for Casey Ashley. That would have been his average size fish for day one, right at 15 pounds, his limit on that day. Meanwhile, over at our leader, Dean Rojas, about a four pound and change average for him, a great day one. He's right around the corner from Casey Ashley, and Dean Rojas said he was absolutely stunned what he caught on day one of this classic. He said best case scenario, he thought he could catch about 16 pounds. Dean Rojas, he has definitely been here before, and he knows really in the grand scheme of things how hard it is to get to this point. It's, you know, I worked my whole life to get to this point, you know what I mean? To even qualify, you know, it's so hard against these guys out here on tour, they're, they're so good. You know, and, and to battle them every day out there on the water, it doesn't matter, it's blowing, you know, raining, you know, blue skies, cold, hot, it doesn't matter. I mean, you gotta bring it every week. First spot this morning was is something that um, I found in practice, and uh, there's a lot of fish swimming around uh, this particular dock, and this has a lot of brush and everything underneath it. Um, yesterday, I don't know if it was late start, you know, um, I didn't get here till like almost 10 o'clock, 9.30, and so they bit pretty early at that time so uh, it's we're a lot earlier now but um, you know I know it's probably just a timing thing this time of year so we'll have to if we don't get them to bite this time we'll have to come back later in the day There's one. Uh, number one. Huh. Nice one. Nice one. Number one. Good way to start the morning. Dean Rojas with a very solid start Lots. here on day number two. And that's that's been the theme so far in this tournament. If you look at the, the slope of the bank, how shallow these boat docks are. And, well, Dean Rojas off to a quick start. And our Geico quotes from the boat. Robbie Floyd is with Dean Rojas now. So 10 minutes into his fishing, Dean Rojas has a two pounder in the live well. He goes to his first spot, didn't get a bite. Now yesterday he caught like a four and a three in that spot really early, like his second and fourth cast. He didn't get any bites, so he moved a couple of hundred yards over, found another dock, similar situation, and he catches that two pounder. So our day one leader moves up a little higher on the leaderboard. Gonna go from our leader now, Dean Rojas, over to Randy Howell. Randy Howell, you remember from last year's classic at Lake Gunnersville, spending his time on that highway bridge and the creek back up a little farther. I don't know how many people Mark Zona would have guessed he'd do the exact same thing this time, but I'm thinking not everybody. Well, he's running all the riprap in the Seneca River, and on day number one, he caught three of his bass on this exact bridge, trying to duplicate that here on day two. My, my pattern is going to be to keep running and throwing that Livingston Howler in the, in the red crawl, Gunnersville crawfish color. Uh, that's caught everything for me. Probably going to mix it up and try to stay open minded and just listen to, yeah. you know, listen to how everything moves and changes throughout the day. And this corner had three, at least three really good three to four pound fish on it yesterday. And them fish weighed 15.5. Something that surprised me yesterday. I never caught a spotted bass. Unusual. Spotted bass are all up here. There is one. Got on it right at the boat. Nice one too. Come on, Lord. That's a really decent one. Hit it right at the boat. That was strange. Come on, baby. Come on. Quit pulling so hard. There he comes up. Oh, he's barely got that one hook. Be careful. Yes, I got it. Thank you, Lord. Eat that baby again. Come up behind it. That's, that's right, that's why you gotta, that's why it's so important to have a 
soft rod when you're uh, cranking these baits in the cold weather, especially because this fish like that one, he followed it up right at the end and got it. And if I'd had a stiff rod, I took it right away from him. Instead, I got me a three, about a three and a quarter. Yeah. Way to start the second morning of the Bassmaster Club. About three and a half. I'm gonna give him three and a half. Thank you, three and a half. Three and a half is a mighty good number here at Lake Hartwell. This 45th Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro and Randy Howell taking that three and a half pounder to move from fifth on up to third place. Again, 56 anglers out there today. Only 25 will be left when it's all said and done. 25 will move on to the championship round, but plenty of fishing yet to come on day two. The Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro is brought to you by Nitro. Toyota. GoPro. And by Triton Boats. The Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro. This is the 45th edition. Guys going for the trophy that changes your life if you are a professional bass angler. Red Height right here started this second day in fourth place. He's uh, only in his third classic, but a very experienced, journeyed angler. Let's be very clear about this. Brett Height's classic almost slipped out of his fingers. It was a phenomenal start. Did fantastic the first five minutes, then five hours of pure pain on day one. It started off awesome. Dropped the trolling motor. Looked on my hummingbird and saw a big old arch down there. Dropped my drop shot down 48 feet on an arch and caught, I don't know, four and a half pound spot. And at about 1245, I went in this creek where I always fish this backup pattern. I went in the first pocket and caught three. And I was like, Jesus, I should have been doing this a long time ago. You know, bass fishing, as we all know, it's all about making the right decisions at the right time. And um, I got to that point where I ran all my juice out there, out deep, and if I was going to have some kind of chance of still doing well in the Bassmasters Classic, I needed to make a move. Yeah! Woo! Big, big one. Come on, baby. Got one. Big old Lake Hartwell spotted bass. Picture perfect spotted bass for Brett Height right there. Staying with the plan he started with on day number one. Obviously so far we'll see if he needs to go back in, do some boat dock fishing a little bit later. Let's get out to a guy who spent his fair share of time in and around boat docks on day number one and that would be California's Skeet Reese. Exactly Skeet Reese. Not fishing that far from Brett Height. Really fishing the mid to lower end of Lake Hartwell right now. And Skeet Reese has one distinct game plan. Cover as many boat docks as you can, kind of just putting the odds in your own favor. Skeet Reese said he didn't set the hook a lot, but they were the right ones. I see a few fish scattered around on the graph, but I want to cover as much water as I can, but you got to fish slow in the process. Four more like that. Skeet Reese trying to stay on track. 
chasing our leader, Dean Rojas, to start the second day of the Geico Bassmaster Classic. Takahiro Amori, one of the anglers who rose to the top on day number one, a fast start for him. Exactly, and Takahiro Amori fishing this tip of this island in the mouth of the Seneca River. The funny thing is, Takahiro does not have a lot of spots to fish. Really, he said he is committed to this one area, but he said the other side of it, there is a ton of fish. I had in my limit like fast hour. I mean, fast hour caught five keeper. That made me feel so good on this freezing cold weather. Like, this is the coldest tournament ever I fished in my life. Yesterday, I caught a limit fast hour. But I can, you know, see it if they're here. And I don't see it. I saw one fish, maybe two. Yesterday, like four or five fish together schooling. Got it. Little guy. Well, I think that's the first for the Bassmaster TV show. I think that's the deepest bass we have ever seen Takahiro Mori catch. Absolutely, in 20 years, as a matter of fact. And of course, 20 years, Takahiro Mori, one of the great stories in the sport of bass fishing. A man who arrived on these shores with a passion for bass fishing, knew no English whatsoever, lived in a pup tent for many years, yes, fished, yes. learned his trade, got to Lake Wiley in 2004, including some last minute heroics, nabbing the Bassmaster Classic Trophy. You know, you take chances every time for the classic, so this could be uh, my time. This is the partial list of who's out at the classic this year. 30 classic appearances for the Iron Man from Texas, Gary Klein. And in 2014, Pickens were slim. Other big names like Shaw Grigsby, Big Show Terry Scroggins, and 2012 Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year Brent Chapman will be sitting this one out. How about another angler that owns both the AOY and Classic titles? The worst part of it, he's from right here in the Palmetto State. Davey Height, not in the field. You want to talk about Classic titles? He owns four of them and he's a bona fide legend of bass fishing. 2015 will not bring Rick Klun his fifth classic trophy. Another former classic champ is out. This one really hurts because Hartwell is where he won his first classic back in 2008. Alton Jones will be in the expo, but not on the water this time. There he is. But the shocker of all, He's the most decorated of all of them, with four classic titles and seven Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year wins. Every year since 1991, like clockwork, he's qualified for the Classic. Most years was seriously in the hunt. This time around, Kevin Van Dam did not make it in. And that's the big reason why the Classic this year may feel a little strange. Some of the biggest names in bass fishing, not in this year's Bass Master Classic, but the true superstar of the Elite Series, Dean Rojas, leading after day one. And something Dean said, he said he knew this tournament should be one deep, definitely should be one deep, practiced three days, never had a bite. And our official one day of practice said he found a load up shallow. There's one. Oh. Come around, come around. Spotted bass. No large milk. Nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah! Woohoo! Nice one. Nice spotted bass. <laughs> Number two. Number two. Uh. Very nice. Very nice. Not not real big, you know, but uh, good good ways to start the start the day. Nice two and a half. Bigger ones will come later. Very nice. 
Aren't they beautiful? Put them in there with the other one. Say hi to your new friend. Ooh. Ah, number two. Anyways, by the way, um, this is where I caught the big one yesterday. We're getting ready to roll up on the glory spot. Coming up here shortly. That was like your appetizer for the morning. The main course is coming up here shortly. Ha ha ha. Bonjour, monsieur. <laughs> I don't know. Yep. Check, I don't please. Know. Thank you. Okay, oh, no. well, you know, Dean Rojas, not off to a bad start. It's a little bit slower than the day before. Robbie Floyd still with him, hanging with him this morning, going to give us the update. It had been about an hour for Dean Rojas since he caught that first bass. I looked at him. I said, come on, man, start getting him. He said, patience, grasshopper, patience. What did he do? He moved to another boat dock, and right off the bat, he catches about a two-and-a-half pounder. The thing is, the patience really seems to be paying off. Now he has two bass in the boat, and he's about 50 yards away. If you look over to my left, that's the spot he caught the five-pounder at yesterday. So he didn't start there right off the bat. He's just picking off these boat docks one after another, and he knows that's where Big Mama was yesterday. Can he find Big Daddy today? We'll move now from Dean Rojas back over to Takahiro Amori. And you think of all the tournaments he's won down in Florida and Texas and here in South Carolina with the moving baits to see what he's doing now. Kind of disconcerting. Takahiro said he hates two things in bass fishing, clear water and deep water. And that's exactly what he's doing right now on Hartwell. He said this was a game plan that he made years ago. Well, I fished all eight classic here. Then I had a plan to, to do the deep and shallow. I love fish shallow. But at this time, I had a plan B to fish deep. You know what, I don't have patience normally, but I gave up everything. I said, I'm gonna just commit to this spot <laughs> and just fish whatever I get. Okay, that's what fish want. So, I mean, I, I, I can't fish too fast, you know. They, uh, they're too cold. Got it. Yeah, three, four, five more. Could be a good one. Could be a big one. No, nope. take it. It's probably better today. more down here the spots something to watch on lake hartwell that happens this time of year all the way through summertime once you get one to bite you bring that entire school with that hooked fish you can drop down and catch two three or four more real fast takahiro mori former classic champion to another former classic champion from 2009 Shreveport, Louisiana, and the Red River Skeet Reese. Skeet Reese also with a reputation for being able to deal with adverse weather conditions. His last tournament win, West Point Lake, in, during incessant rainfall. So Skeet Reese, a guy who likes it when the rest of the field takes a few punches to the midsection. He was liking it on day one. I mean, I've been doing this long enough. This is my 15th classic, so I realize that it's just day one. I'm not going out there expecting to catch 20 pounds tomorrow. I'm going to go out and fish my butt off. and. I might catch eight pounds, I might catch 15, I might catch 20, I might catch 25. I don't know. I just know that I'll go fish tomorrow as hard as I can and try and make the best decisions I can to put myself in position to go into Sunday and, and hopefully hold that trophy over my head once again. God! I lost a bigger one than that cast before. God, that was like a four foot thing I just lost. Always talk about execution in the Bassmaster Classic. Skeet Reese firing out 
Losing a good one right here. Then firing back in, catching yeah. a keeper. Definitely, though, not the one he was looking for. I cast a little too soon to the corner of the dock, and the fish bit, and my rod, I just had a bad hook set. Watch the fish come up, roll, come undone. It's a four to five pound fish. But that one fish right now is the difference of potentially leading the Bassmaster Classic or being within a pound of the lead, potentially. That's one that it, it still could be the one that deciding factor, and that's what hurts. Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro 2015. We had the Classic here on Lake Hartwell in Anderson, South Carolina back in 2008. Large mouth and spotted bass, both players back then, but the spotteds are playing a little more this year. I spotted bass, <laughs> number two. Exactly, the difference in the spotted bass this year compared to 2008. Lake Hartwell spotted bass. They have definitely grown in size. Head over to a big bass specialist, Keith Combs. Caught the bulk of his weight on day one on a jerkbait, really Something that we have not seen play as much as we thought it would. Keith Combs on day number one only had five keeper bites. Without five fish a day in this classic, you're not going to win. Mm -hmm. Today I only had five bites. Luckily I caught them all. So tomorrow we'll have a longer day. I expect the weights will go up. I'll have to follow suit if I want to, you know, retain my position or try to move up into the lead. Big, big. Man, he's just like so barely hooked. Uh, he would have held pretty good, I think. Keith Combs third place to start this day, trying his best to hold in that top five here on day number two. Back over to Casey Ashley, and everyone expected Casey to use the jig routine as much as Elton Jones did to win back in 2008, but not the case this time. He said this is not how he wanted to fish this tournament, fishing a little homemade fish head spin, 3A sounds that his dad made. His dad made a pile of these before the tournament, said here, this is going to win the Classic. And he said this is a meat and potatoes tournament. A lot of his potatoes, his smaller fish, he wanted to catch on that right there, a little fish head spin with a Zoom Super Fluke trailer. He said he uses it a lot on Clark's Hill, uses it here on Hartwell, anywhere that there's blueback herring. The other side that we heard him say early this morning, you have to catch largemouth here to win this tournament. But something you notice on Casey Ashley's spots that he fishes, those largemouth will bite very early. There's a flurry of largemouth bites then it seems all of his areas are taken over by <clears throat> spotted bass. On the other side, those spotted bass do not have a lot of size. Look at the good on that spot. He just got too close. Had it hooked under the mouth. Yeah, he'll weigh two pounds. And that shows perfect right now what's going on in Casey Ashley's areas. His areas are overrun with largemouth early, but when those spotted bass show up, those largemouth, just like Casey said, are like stripers, they disappear. Casey said from the first fish of those four fish in his boat today, I need to replace each and every one of them. Need to upgrade the size. Same story for Brett Height. Exactly right. But Casey Ashley said he really didn't want to target spotted bass at all. That is not the case for Brett Height. Brett Height coming in this tournament truly felt spotted bass could win this thing. Here's the edge of the brush pile right here is where, here comes my Cinco down, you can see it right here. Cinco's going down in the bottom, Cinco's going down in the bottom. Just kind of drag this thing. I like to drag it along there. Real, real subtle bite, real subtle. Real, real high in the water column. I'm gonna drop it on him, let's see if we, let's see what he's gonna do. He's coming up just a little bit. Oh, oh, see, he's following it down. So here's my Cinco going down. Here's the fish following the Cinco down. He's following it down, he's following it down, following it down, following it down. So the, there's, this is the fish right here, that big, this was my Cinco, that was, that's the fish. 
So check my drag. And then what I like to do is hit the trolling motor and just start, just shake this thing just a little bit. Hey, okay, got it. It's a big one. Oh my gosh, look at that spot. Come here, baby. Come here. Come to daddy. Yeah! Woo! Check that one out, boys. That's what we're after. Giant Lake Hartwell spotted bass. Yamamoto Cinco. That's number five. Mm. That was awesome. Those are the ones we're after right there. That's what lives out here in Lake Hartwell. That, that fish is almost 40 feet deep. Brett Hyde perfectly in tune with the spotted bass vibe here on Lake Hartwell. The question is, can you win the classic with all spotted bass? Now back up the Seneca River with Randy Howell. On day one of this tournament, there was a lot of current in this lake. They were pulling a lot of water, positioning these fish. So far today, no current and the fish are really suspended. See all that, all those fish up, up high, suspended up there. There's a lot of bait, a lot of white bass, striped white bass, and probably bass all mixed in that stuff there. And it's, that's happening because no current. When the current's running, they pull out of that suspended area and they position to feed. You got no current, they roam around more. This crankbait here dives seven to nine feet on 12 pound gamma fluorocarbon. So it, this fish are hitting it at the deepest point. I've hung up a few times and in that depth zone and it's past my, my rod seven foot and it's foot and a half, two foot past my rod, so eight and a half or nine foot's kind of been the magic depth. There he is, that's a big one right there. That's a big one. Yes, sir, look at that one. Look at that one. Come on, Jesus, come on. Come here, come here to me. Stop all that mess. Whoo, yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that's a nice one. Mm-hmm, mm-mm, mm had to get my glove wet, but I got his butt. Almost got him live, didn't we? <laughs> Much different day of competition. Not a lot of largemouth caught today. Randy Howell scratching, staying in this Bassmaster class. Randy Howell moving back up into the top five. And although we did see guys like Hackney and Iconelli make it pretty good with four fish limits here, Brett Hyde will be the first to tell you, you never feel comfortable until you got five. Come here, baby. Come here, come to daddy. Yeah! I got that ball rolling early. I got four real, real quick. And Woo! you know that, any bass fisherman will tell you, that just really helps, helps you settle down. Giant Lake Hartwell spotted bass. Somebody's gonna stumble a little bit. I've been really, really consistent both days. You know, by doing that, I, I think I'm, I'd have a really good chance to win the classic. Number one achievement in the sport of bass fishing would be a win here, Lake Hartwell, Anderson, South Carolina, because this is the Geico Bassmaster Classic, presented by GoPro. Second day of competition, full field in it. As often happens on day number two, a lot of moving up and down that leaderboard. Mike Iconelli, the most recent guy to shoot to the top from all the way back in ninth place. Iconelli fishing the mid-lake area of Hartwell. Iconelli fishing very frighteningly similar to Brett Height fishing deep, but the difference here is Iconelli catching a mixed bag, spotted bass and largemouth mix, and our own Robbie Floyd out on the water right now with Iconelli and our Geico quotes from the boat. I've caught up with our unofficial leader, Mike Iconelli, with 17 pounds for his five fish limit today, and Mike's actually moved to this area. It's a, a, a 
confluence of a creek channel, a point, and there's a brush pile right there in that confluence, right where it drops off. I know that there's a brush pile down there because I know somebody that dropped that brush pile down there. But again, he's looking for a little bit of change, something to change things up, but he's been catching his fish today on a three quarter ounce missile jig. He's still sticking with it and he's trying to upgrade those 17 pounds. It's going great. It's going great. It's, it's been a good day. It's, uh, it's a different day than yesterday, obviously. We got the cloud cover. Uh, that's super important to what I'm doing here and especially in the morning. Um, the other thing is we got that early start this morning, which allowed me to get on a couple fish early. That's a big thing, you know. Out here, I'm not getting very many bites. So to get a couple in the live well early settles you down, calms your nerves. Um, and now I'm just slow and steady. You don't get a lot of bites out here. But when you get a bite in a steeper water, it's usually a good one. It's usually a two, three pounder or bigger. So it's a good strategy to try to win the tournament. Big one. Giant. Stay out there. Giant. Giant, giant. Oh my God. that spot Whew. almost four pounder Whew. look at the size of that spot look at that belly Woo! keep the head in the game keep the head in the game man Woo! look at this call look at this call look at that call Not just excited to catch a big one, but that call right there is what set him on fire. And, well, he should be excited about that. Adding at least a pound, probably a pound and a half to his bottom line. Getting him over 18 pounds, Michael Iconelli, as we head back to Takahiro Omori. Takahiro has not moved all day long. He said this is his only and primary area in this event. The other side is I want you to look at Takahiro's graph. Very barren on the bottom right here, about 45 feet of water. But off his left-hand side, that creek channel cuts it with heavy timber. Got it. Did I have your mouse? Oh, come on. Oh, they, they broke my line and the weight. That's stupid. I got still got fuck, but I just fish come off. By the way, that was the same worm I had all this morning. I caught seven keeper in the same shell shaped worm yesterday. But they don't fight to you know, normally you lose every fish. But uh just those fish just so cold, you know, so they're not aggressive to fight. So you don't lose very many bait. That's a big one. It's a big one. Oh, it's a big one. Yeah! Takahiro Amori rebounding from a disappointing lost fish right there at the boat to catch a good solid keeper right there. His five fish total now just a half pound shy of 25. Takahiro hanging in there big time on day number two. 
like Takahiro Casey Ashley fishing the same spot where he started on the first day of competition. Exactly right, and Casey Ashley has gone in little flurries. If you look all the way back on day number one and day two, he's living in this primary area, fishing deep, fishing really 30 to 45 feet of water. The other side of it is he said this. We'll continue to say that he wanted to win this tournament with a jig. He said if I, he's got a shot to win, it will be with a jig. So far, that has not been the case. Almost every single bass Casey Ashley has had in his live well has come on that little homemade underspin with a Zoom Super Fluke. Different from the rest of the competitors, though, Casey Ashley is having no problems at all putting a limit in the boat each day so far. Another spot. We'll take them two, though, if they weigh three pounds a piece. Not quite three pounders. I say he's not quite a three pounder, though. Yeah, he'll go two, though. Yeah, he'll go two. He's fat. This style fishing right here is not what Casey Ashley said he wanted to do in this event. Well, so far, not working out all that bad. No, Casey Ashley certainly holding his own, staying right around that top five, top six. You got to do that. You got to put yourself in position for the final day of the Classic. Only 25 guys will be out there then, all of them gunning for the top prize in bass fishing. Ike and Ellie on top at this point in day two, with more fishing yet to come. The Geico Bass Master Classic, presented by GoPro is brought to you by Evan Williams Bourbon. Yamaha. Skeeter Boats. And by Bass Pro Shops. The Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro 2015 World Championship of Bass Fishing on Lake Hartwell in South Carolina, where it was held, Mark Zona, back in 2008. And in that year, we saw a different character, as you mentioned, to each one of the three days. Guys at the top escorted out, new guys working their way in. Are we starting to see that here? Very, very yeah, similar yeah, to bit. 2008. And one of the, go, let's talk about Casey Ashley. And the reason why Casey Ashley said, what he wanted for this tournament was for a cold snap to hit right before it. He got that wish. The reason why, what really has transpired down in the southeast, it's been a very, very mild, mild winter so overall, far. Overall, yeah. Overall, water temps 50 to 55 degrees until this Arctic blast knocked it down from 45 to 40 degree water temp. And Casey Ashley said, Here's what I know goes on on this lake, is my quantity, my quantity can come deep. I know I'm gonna catch a limit. That's exactly what he did on day number one. And he said, the guys that this cold water is gonna affect is guys like Randy Howell, guys that are fishing shallow, and they're gonna lose their numbers. The reason why is when that water temp dipped yeah. down, the numbers of bass that they were catching shallow definitely Ooh. fell with it. All right, and Randy Howell also relying on a little bit on current and so forth and things like that that are not there today. Exactly right. Dean Rojas, our day number one leader, great day one and having a solid day two, but not what he had on day number one. When he had the bluebird conditions like right there, he crushed them on shallow docks. And we're starting to see something happen on day number two. They're shallow guys, they're just not catching the numbers they caught on day number one. That would also include Skeet Reese, in your opinion. Exactly Same sort right. of situation. But here again, the guys that are fishing shallow, like Howell, Rojas, Skeet Reese, they're just surviving, and you're starting to see it flip-flop with your deeper guys, Takahiro Omori, Casey Ashley, Mike hmm. Iaconelli. They're starting to, uh, it, here's the thing, the odds are in their favor to catch that limit and upgrade through the day where the shallow water anglers are not. Hmm. Takahiro Omori not moving hardly. He's been camped in this one place ever since practice, and Michael Iaconelli also seems to be on a very Damn. definite game plan. So a lot of changes, as you say, on the way here, and no doubt we'll see more in the moments to come. Well, despite the changes we are seeing, Dean Rojas, Mike Iaconelli staying in there, Brett Height, same spot, fourth place as he was at the end of yesterday. But look at these moves up the board by the likes of Takahiro Mori, Casey Ashley, no doubt others as this day progresses. We'll be back.
That is the trophy right there that goes to the world champion bass fisherman, the winner of the Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro. Our lake is Lake Hartwell in the upcountry area of South Carolina. 56 anglers, the best in the world out here, trying to win that life-changing title as the world champion. Randy Howell out here looking for his fourth keeper. Exactly right. Randy Howell has had a brutal three hours, has not had a single bite. Something has changed when likely it's that lack of current he had on day one. Randy Howell just looking to put number four in the boat now. Having those cloud cover, no sunlight. I thought it would make them bite a little bit better than they are. And I think this lack of current yesterday had a lot of current. And today we got none. And like you have to work a little harder for them. There he is. That a fish? Yeah, that's a fish. Come on, baby, stay. I ain't real big. I'm coming right towards you right here. Come on, Lord. Let him stay on. He's just got that back hook. Come on. Woo! There we go. We'll take that. We'll take it. He ain't big, but he barely got it. Look at that. Two pounder again. But maybe the bite is back on. It's about to happen. Swimming around suspended under all that bait. All of a sudden he sees this howler going by looking like a crawfish. He's like, man, what's a crawfish doing swimming through the middle of this coat? He said, I better get him. There's no reason for that one to have been there. And then that was, see, he was not, he was just over here on nothing. Just suspended, not even hitting the bottom. Crank it down there, it's 15 feet deep. Shad and bait all over, and I just saw some fish break right here. Look like white bass, see, and cranked right through them, and then that one just comes out of nowhere and gets it. Randy Hal fishing in an area of a feature known as the Six Mile Bridge, and pretty much got those kind of areas all to himself over to Dean Rojas. Exactly, and the big difference we're seeing on day two, our shallow water guys are struggling. Not a lot of bites. In fact, a lot of the quality has disappeared too. I haven't fished shallow at all. Everything I've done is deep, and uh, you know I'm known as a shallow water fisherman because that's what I enjoy doing. I like throwing a frog. I love fishing them shallow and everything. I've totally gone 180 degrees from from what I'm normally you know really good at, and I'm good at deep water fishing. I did a lot of it growing up out west, and for me, I, I've just made the commitment that that's the way that I'm going to have to. You know, that's what's going to take to win this event. I've done a lot of homework, a lot of research, done everything I possibly can to put myself in a position to know all the information I could to provide me with, you know, a classic victory. And so if, if that all happens, if, if, if it does or if it doesn't, I know that I've given everything I possibly could, all my hard work, all my dedication, you know, I'll continue to do it until I win. I've just been bouncing around, you know, hitting certain stretches, deep channel swings. You know, we're in 29 right now, but this time of year they're going to be, you know, the, close to deep water, even the big ones, spotted bass and the largemouth. There's one. It's a good one there. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right, whoa, keep on. <laughs> Number four, all right. It's a spot of bass, but that's all right, we'll take it. We'll put him over here on this side. There's a lot of them down there right now. I can see him on my graph, and I lost my worm. I tell you, my little cane dumper, cane stick has been uh, from Big Bite. Been good. I could see him on my graph down there. It's four, you know, not real big, but a start. Just need to get five. Dean Rojas finding the going a good bit slower than it was on day number one when he took the lead in this event, but trying to put something together in the final half of the day back over to Takahiro Omori, holding tight in the top five, doing what he's been doing since, since Wednesday's practice, four days earlier. Yeah, Shad is down here right now in a 40 foot. But I don't see any fish with it though. You just fish that spot, you know. 
That's how it works. Especially if the fish is not biting, you had to slow down to, to take your time. Then this setup is right. So I'm not gonna screw that, this opportunity right here. Oh, that's one right here. Two fish right under my boat. Watch, I'm gonna get it. Ah, big one. God, it's heavy. This guy is heavy. Whoa! Dude, right now, this guy's a heavy guy. Yeah. It's, it's, hope it's bass. Could be five pound spots. Gosh, yeah, another one with it. This dude is big fish, dude. Two more with it. Ah, uh, this gotta be five pound spots. <sighs> no three. Ah, uh, so many fish right now. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Could be a striper if this big, this big, but I. I I'm hoping for the big bass. Gigantic bass right there. Wow. That's five pounder. Yeah! Well, pay attention to what's going on. The biggest largemouth of the day so far. Something we did not see coming. Takahiro Mori jumping into our top five fishing 45 feet of water. Top five, our top 12. You talk about a murderer's row. Consider five classic champions in this top 12 right now, including Takahiro Mori, Randy Howell, Mike Iaconelli, Ski Reese, and all the rest. The man who stands atop this field at the end of it all has earned his payday. The, all of them are studs. I mean, everybody that's here that's fishing the Classic can catch them, but, you know, that's why it's so hard to win the daggum thing. I mean, everybody's just so good and can catch them so well. The pressure factor for anybody, I mean, everybody knows they've got to catch them, so it's kind of going to be the same. You, you just go out there and with an open mind and do what you do and, and, and just give it your all. That's all you can do. The Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro World Championship of Bass Fishing going on right now, Lake Hartwell in South Carolina. All important second day action. Remember last year's classic? Remember hashtag big catch? Yes. The great photos. Here's the new one, hashtag big catch contest. Our All favorite season. last year was D. Wayne from Ashwaubenon, right. Wisconsin. B. D. Wayne, send us your big bass picks. We will get you on the show. You'll be the champ of the day of the week. Absolutely. Think of the photos we will see. Something else you might want to be aware of, online, <laughs> Bassmaster.com. Bass Fantasy Fishing presented by Toyota. Your chance to prove to the world you got the knowledge to whip all the other bass fans out there. I'm going to set you up right here. Matthew Berry, I am the Matthew Berry of Fantasy Fishing. Coming with the tips. <laughs> That's exactly right. Set up your team. You may want to pick this guy right here, your Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year from 2014. Good tip. Exactly yeah. right. Go with momentum. Go with Greg Hackney. Greg Hackney, who took over the lead before the halfway point in the season and totally controlled it the rest of the way. Lake Cayuga was an absolute marvel of, of just handling the rest of the field. You watch Greg Hackney's attitude right now. We've seen huge runs from Kevin Van Dam, Skeet Reese. Look for another run from Greg Hackney this season. back on the water right now with Casey Ashley and this is what makes Casey Ashley so powerful so dangerous on Lake Hartwell catching a quick limit and then wanting to upgrade through the day so far in this tournament Casey Ashley desperately looking for a jig bite that has not transpired but he said he will commit a minimum of three hours looking for that knockout punch I've been trying to trying to after I get a limit I've run you know a lot of a lot of different water just fishing certain places that I know, you know, if you do get a bite, it's most time a good one. That's one advantage of knowing the lake really, really well. I mean, you, you gotta spend the most time 
that you've got in the best areas. And you know, that's where advantage of knowing the lake really helps. It's a good fish. Real good fish. Uh, we're looking for. Good number five. I caught that when they come up schooling right there. Get him in there. Catch us another one. It's number five. There he is. That ain't a big one there, but it is a fish. Get rid of one of them small uh. Uh, I think he's skinny. I don't know if he's going to cool anything or not. Well, local knowledge paying off in a small way right there, culling up ounces. That's the difference between a herring lake and a regular lake this time of year. 40 degree water. If you heard Casey Ashley right there, the fish actually came up schooling on the surface. From Casey Ashley and his brief largemouth run right there, we're going to follow this group of boats right there. Seems like Michael Iaconelli always has a grouping of spectators around him. Today is no different. He talked about the months leading up to this tournament, the pre-practice times and all the visits he's made here. He's put up together a catalog of markers with his electronics and GPS of uh, about a thousand differently labeled things and a lot of places to go through. He's not going to hit them all, certainly, but uh, he certainly has done his homework done his homework in a big way is an understatement. When he came here in December, he spent about three or four days on the water and never made a single cast. Literally just drove around and idled and he would graph these little points, these creek channel swings. He said he had 1,200 waypoints. Now he's got that whittled down well, to about 20 to 40 key spots. In this area in the Mid Lake region of Hartwell, this is where he's catching his bass and they all have the same exact theme, okay? We're gonna go under the water right now with our Skeeter Taste the Bait, and wherever you'd have a point like that right there, where the creek channel would cut those points, you'd have a very heavy, deep timber line in 45 to 55 feet of water. That timber line is not what he's concentrating on. It's up on that point where you'd have one single isolated piece of structure, whether it's a lay down like this right here. In fact. He said he had a few bamboo piles that were set out there. And he said as soon as he would make contact with this isolated cover with his jig, he would just dead stick it. He would sit there and soak it. He said the other thing, his bass were not herring chasers. There is no doubt they were feeding on crawfish. Throughout practice, he would catch a bass and said they would spit up crawfish the size of a small lobster. So far in this tournament, Mike Iaconelli, all of his areas, he said, do not have 10 or 20 bass on them. They have one, two, three bass. He's capitalized what he calls fishing slow very quickly. Fishing slow a lot of places, but be slow when you get there. He said that's one of the hardest things in the world to do, but absolutely essential for his game plan here at Lake Hartwell. Some good fish in the live well from Michael Iaconelli. He's made the biggest move of all of our anglers today at one point, having taken over the lead from Dean Rojas. God, it feels so good, you know. You just work and work and work and work, and then you finally get a bite, man, and it all pays off, you know? It's a big one. It's a big one. Oh, it's a big one. Gonna call a little bit. It's half a pound. About a half a pound. Like Anelli said, he wanted a cold, painfully brutal cold classic. He got that and he has grinded out a solid limit here on day number two. 
Iconelli always wow. loaded for Bear. Every time he comes to the Bassmaster Classic, every time he makes it into the top 10, he's always a threat to win the thing. A lot of these veteran observers really impressed with the fact that he's committed to this game plan. He's fashioned for Lake Hartwell. Iconelli, definitely one to watch in this Classic. You know, a lot of people misconstrue uh, confidence with being cocky or being oversure. But for me, it's never been that way. Um, confidence is always the supreme feeling for me, the driving force that gets me to the top. I use it every tournament. I use it in other areas of life. And, uh, and I'm using it this week, and it's working out great. our coverage day two of the 2015 Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro. Lake Hartwell, Anderson, South Carolina. Greenville, South Carolina, also a host city that the Bon Secours Wellness Center is the spot for the huge Bassmaster Classic weigh-ins. Big crowd here on day two with still some hours left to fish for these anglers out here, including Brett Height, who's trying to fish his way back into the top five, but encountering some issues. We knew maintenance would be an issue in this tournament some way, shape, or form. Brett Height, just like Randall Tharp last year, losing, well, losing almost a half hour of fishing time. And he does. He has a very solid limit of spotted bass in the boat. Uh, one question is, can he get back on the water and upgrade that limit? The afternoon bite, very important to Brett Height on day number one. This is a bad part of the day to lose precious fishing moments. So Brett Height looking to get out and get something done in the final hour of fishing. I'm going to fish over around here. This has been where I caught the biggest one today. I'm going to make sure I can get back to Long Tramp. Put my head down and catch another big one. I got one. Big one. Big one. Yes. Mm. Yeah, baby. Cinco does it again. Nice big fat spotted bass. We're gonna call a nice little tiny guy in here. Old Blue. Blue, you're not my boy no more. Hey, come on, man. You're my boy, Blue. Tommy Sanders, there's no doubt. Brett Height has caught by far the most impressive bag of spotted bass this entire tournament. Brett Height back into the top five. Everyone pursuing the man who started the day with the lead. That would be Dean Rojas. Bountiful, surprising day one for Dean Rojas. Day two a good bit slower for this man from Arizona. Grew up on the West Coast. Well, I think that where I grew up and uh, all the stuff that I had to overcome to get to this point, you know, to fish a Bassmasters Classic is always a treasure each one of them. This is my 13th Classic and each one of them, you know, I pour my heart and soul through the whole season, you know, to get to this point, to this point of trying to be able to, you know, win my childhood dream and that's the Bassmasters Classic. It's my, ter my 13th time here and uh, you know, it's, they're all special, you know, but as I get older and everything and the whole glamour of it all, it's just, you know, it consumes me, but there's still a job at hand and that's to finish number one. And my job here is to win. <laughs> Sugar. His name's Sugar. Spicy. See, look at him run. <laughs> look at him. That's funny, man. <laughs> uh, little guy. Remember, he's 12 inches. Small keeper. 
Oh, it just reminds me of the Grand Lake Classic. You know what I mean? Yeah. When Sugar came running down. The <laughs> Wait, no, 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 I was a different Sorry. dog. I, I wondered kind of what was going on there, but uh, wound up with Sugar on the run. Dean Rojas in his 13th Classic. He is vote number 13. I understand he started 13th practice for this event, and his fish measured 13 inches. Does it mean anything? I suspect not. As we get back out to Takahiro Amore, he's been playing the numbers today, and it's worked out for him. In a big way, Takahiro has dropped shot him all morning looking for one knockout punch with a football jig. And this morning I put up here, I don't see, you know, fish on my graph. I said, man, it's going to be a tough day. <laughs> Ended up my good day so far. Got it. Ooh, big one, big one. Oh, yeah. I knew this is... Big one. Four pounder. Oh, this is too bad. Shut up. This is bad. Oh. All right. Yeah. They got chewed up. Four pounder. Mm. Got it. Ooh, big one, big one. That's what I was looking for. Four pounder. I got now. I mean, he swore it. Come down there. I felt it like, I mean, he, he took it. I got four and four and a half and a three maybe with eight pound. I had I had a big day today to have a shot for tomorrow. So man that that four pound the super healthy fish. He just swallowed it. Takahiro with a late game monster call right there. Takahiro Morgan gonna go back up the Seneca River with Randy Howell and Randy Howell. Just seems like his whole day's been the only word to use is fragile. He has not got a lot of bites. And for the first time on day number two, Randy Howell leaving all his riprap banks. Randy Howell definitely on a mission this day two of the classic. He uh, has to finish in the top five. That will trigger a domino effect of people who are contributing to an effort to bring a lot of the residents from his King's Home charity, the project he works on, the final day weigh in. So Randy's working very, very hard to get those kids there. I'm a big time preparation guy, an organized guy, and I like to have everything in order. And right now, it's not quite there yet. I try to hang a lot of the baits that I'm gonna use throughout the season. Since the Howlard, I won the Classic last year on. Bass fishing is a team sport for Randy and Robin Howell, who use their Classic title to make 2014 a year of giving back. This win has definitely changed our life. I can't even imagine how it would be to win two of them because one has just been so phenomenal. Be a big one. Just one of those days you dream about. And the fish were just biting better, never lost one all day. Yes, and it just became a magical day. Yeah! Woo! Yeah! That's what I came back here for. I shed a lot of tears driving that hour and a half drive back to Birmingham and I thought I got it all out before I got there, but I didn't. <laughs> 18 pounds, five pounds. Al's dramatic cumber behind win last year was witnessed by a special Birmingham cheering section. When they announced that he won, we all jumped out of our chairs. It was amazing. Gina lives here in King's Home, south of Birmingham. You know, I was scared. I didn't know what to do. I was shaking in the corner. She's a victim of domestic violence who agreed to appear on camera to let everyone know about the impact Randy has had on her life. And so many others who come here suffering from domestic violence. We don't know what we would do without Randy, the things that he does for us. When I came to King's Home, I still didn't know what, you know, what path I wanted to be on. And they taught me how to be an independent person. They taught me how to live. What does he emphasize to you that you, that you take with you every day? Do not give up. She had been there since she was 15. 
how this young lady could function and talk with a smile on her face and love in her heart. And you know that came because of uh, I've heard so many bad stories from so many of those kids that have been through stuff that, that never should have happened. Howell not only supports King's home with his words, but also his wallet, giving away four boats including last year's Triton Classic winning boat, raising nearly half a million dollars over four years. This is a classic champion in every sense of the word. Fishing's not the most important thing in his life. In his career, I would put down there around third. Not only is he the Bassmasters Classic champion, which doesn't make you a great person, makes you a great angler, uh, but what Randy's done off the water just really makes him a great person. A lot of the classic winners use that win as a platform. Randy's platform certainly doing a lot of good for a lot of people. Two hours and change. I got about. Uh, I'm just going to kind of go with the go with the flow and try to see what I'm seeing and feeling as I'm moving along. Looking at stuff today, just kind of depending on the wind or if any current starts back. I got a bunch of bunch of places and a bunch of ideas. They're all spread away, spread apart as I'm working back. So I've got I've got a creek that I've caught a few big ones in that I hadn't been in yet. I'm thinking about going in that. But I'd like to stop and catch me one more, have a five fish limit before I gamble on that. Yeah! Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. That's a big one. Yes, sir, Jesus. Come on. Come on, Jesus. Come on. Jesus, that's a big one. Watch out. Watch out. Oh, my gosh. Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Got him. Got him. Yeah! Thank you, Jesus! Whoa! God, that's awesome! Mmm! Man, that's awesome! Praise the Lord! God! Skipped it under that dock. Whew, that line went to the right. God. Man, that fires me up. Mmm! Mmm! <laughs> yes! Five and a half pounder, baby, in the Best Master Classic. At the end of the day, you never give up. Just like Ike and Ellie said, you never give up. Gosh, thank you, Lord. Look at that big, pretty girl. Holy smoke. Oh, fires me up. That's why I came back here for. I had a gut feeling the whole time I was feeling it that I needed to come back here. And I was thinking it was because of those rocks. I didn't get a bite. Then I looked over there at that dock and it was like cast under that dock. And boom. Boom, baby. Gosh. Man, I am shaking like a leaf. Shoot fire. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Can't even cast now. Oh, shook. Stinking up. Huh. So again, Randy needed a top five finish today to get the Kings home kids down for the final day of the Classic. He's in the top five now. That job is done. The only other job left is to become only the third angler ever to win back-to-back -back Bassmaster Classics. And you better think it's crossed Randy's mind. It would just be phenomenal just to, just to get uh, on a list of any kind of historical meaning like that in bass fishing would be amazing. But then you get to be on there with Rick Klein, who's always been a great, you know, hero of mine in our sport and Kevin Van Dam who's the greatest ever picked up a rod I think and uh, it would be great to have Randy Howell listed right there with him. Bassmaster Classic 2015. This is day two, a crucial day of the three days of fishing and this day two will end right here at the Bon Secours Wellness Arena downtown Greenville, South Carolina and just hour and change away when the anglers finish up out at Lake Hartwell and we have seen some amazing pictures from Lake Hartwell today some incredible fishing some incredible movement up and down that leaderboard Mark Zone. Yeah, there's been definite windows of opportunity really the first hour of competition this morning there was major shots fired from there it's been a, just a grind there'll be little pockets throughout this body of water where you'd see them start feeding 
Randy Howell, by far in the last hour of fishing, deciding to leave all his riprap, going over to a little set of boat docks, proving the biggest call in this event so far. He was sitting on four fish and catching a giant bass. Yeah, Randy Howell was outside the top six. This one move right here changed the whole day around. After a slow grind, a fast catch up, and he is positioned to win this classic. Man, when I mean, you just need one so bad that you can just taste it. You need it so bad. The Lord comes through for you like that. It's just, oh my goodness, it's unbelievable. A roller coaster of emotions, man. In this sport, nothing like it. It's the best sport on earth. That's why nobody can dominate it. Nobody can master it. And it keeps you coming back for more every day. <laughs> Got to skip under this dock now. There he is. Yes. Dunk. I felt that one snack it, boy. That one'll cool. <laughs> the old boat dock pattern getting on. The little rattleback jig. That's a decent one. Ain't no. No five pounder or nothing, but he'll curl that first one this morning now. Randy Hal definitely, his mood has shifted here after that timely decision to change up his game plan late in the day on day number two here. No doubt his limited in a big way, moved into fourth place, and with this call here, he's going to move up into third place. So Randy Howell making all the right moves on day number two as we go to Takahiro Mori, who has not done much in the way of moving today, but has done very, very well. No, really, if you kind of look over Takahiro's entire day. He's lived on the north end of an island in the mouth of the Seneca River. And the beautiful thing about this island in the background, it's the head of where the current hits the most. So you're gonna know that there's a population of bass that lives there. Takahiro would bounce back and forth, really yeah. fishing a drop shot, a Yamamoto shad-shaped worm. He was also fishing a three quarter ounce football jig, but for the first time today, Takahiro gonna make a run and leave his primary load of fish. And that's one thing we said coming into this tournament, fish management was definitely gonna play a role. It's gonna be very hard for him to upgrade on that primary spot. Takahiro looking for one more solid call. Takahiro Amori, who started the second day of the Classic in seventh place, has made a great run up the ladder today. For a good bit of this afternoon, he has occupied the top spot. Got it. Got it. Big one. Big one. Big one. Oh, yeah, Yeah. For an angler not wanting to come into this tournament and fish deep, clear water, Takahiro has done that to perfection so far. And once again, Takahiro Mori back on top, unofficially of the leaderboard. Of course, we got the weigh-in coming up soon where we make everything official. Now, Kobe Carden, a look at one of our anglers from the Bass Nation side. This is the Southern Division champion from the championship last year, and Kobe from Alabama, Shelby, Alabama, doing very well on day two. Make no mistake about it, Kobe Carden in the state of Alabama is an absolute hammer. One of the problems he's had in this tournament, now get ready, this is something I've never said on the Bassmaster television show, he wasn't able to fish his primary area because it was froze on day that, one. That's Had right, we've never heard that. <laughs> Looks like he's, he's called it pretty well so far. All the right moves. We're seeing a lot of them on the second day of the Bassmaster Classic and Bass Nation angler Kobe Carden making a big one. Now back to Casey Ashley, a good, solid day doing what he had to do. Definitely he's had two very, very consistent days of fishing. Really, the most surprising thing is how, how much he dominated the FLW tournament one year ago. I mean, he crushed them on a jig. And not only that, nobody was even on the same playing field during that event. We are yet to see that big jig bite so far from Casey. But really, if you pan back to the last two classics, Grand Lake with Jason Christie, Lake Gunnersville with Randall Tharp, there is a huge amount of pressure to win the Bassmaster Classic. Casey Ashley knows all eyes are on him. Any win is is definitely a, a big thing to us. And the Classic is that much more. But to win a Classic in your hometown,
it's not easy to do. I mean, everything's really got to line up for you to win a classic for sure. It's an opportunity that I've looked forward to ever since. You know, my first Bassmaster Classic was here. Uh, I was 23 years old at that point in time. And, you know, a little green, still a little starstruck from being around the guys and fishing against the guys that I've idolized and watched on TV since I was a kid. Uh, I think that took a, took a toll on me, you know, and, and that Classic was so big and such a great turnout. Fan base was phenomenal. And I knew it would be back. So I've had about seven years to prepare for this. And, you know, win or lose, you know, I'm, whatever it is, I'm going to give it my all. But, you know, it, it would mean a lot to win. It would mean a lot to win a classic period. But to win it in your hometown, hey, buddy. in front of all the people that you know, all your support, all the people that text you late at night when you're on the road, want to know, hey, man, how Hi. you doing? Uh, no matter where you're at, for, for them to experience that right here, for me to take that trophy home and keep it in the home state, that'd be awesome. He's going cool either, but he's healthy. Well, Casey Ashley has not made giant calls throughout this day to a competition, but he has caught enough to keep him within range for the final day of this classic. Local favorite Casey Ashley wrapping up what anyone would have to call a successful effort. There's a, a successful Hartwell effort. Today. Oh, oh yeah, right there, up the Sanders. road. Greenville, South Carolina, the host city, and the crowds are ready to fog in to the Bon Secure Wellness Arena. Lots of things to see in there, including our Evan Williams pregame show featuring the Super Retriever, Super Doc Dogs, athletes, every one of them. Take a look at some of these jumps on display here. Astro's my favorite, Tommy. Astro, yeah. I like Astro, too. Here's Astro right now in action. Oh, yes. Yes, that's what they came to see here. These folks ready to get in and experience it all. It's like old home week for bass fishing. The Dick Sporting Goods Expo, the Bassmaster Expo is one of the most unique sporting goods shows in all the world. The greatest outdoor show in a lot of people's opinion. But the big reason people come to the Bassmaster Classic is to find out who's going to take home this trophy. And here on day two, we're going to find out who's going to make a giant step toward achieving that goal. The GEICO Bassmaster Classic, presented by GoPro, is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops, Hummingbird, Mercury, and by Minn Kota. Day two of the Geico Bassmaster Classic and a great crowd on hand at the Bon Secours Wellness Arena in Greenville. The crowd getting a chance to honor David Walker, who on one of the practice days actually saved the life of one of our non-classic anglers on the lake. Um, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, we provide safe recreation all over the United States. Nowhere better than right here at Lake Hartwell. Uh, I want to thank all the anglers for providing you know, safe uh, examples for boating safety, but David, what you did earlier this week is just amazing. No one could have saved his life but you. Uh, you were determined, you got there, you got him in the boat, and you saved his life. And so on, beha on behalf of the United States Army, I want to present you this award for saving Brandon's life. There's the young man, Brandon Artister, who David Walker was able to save that day on Lake Hartwell before the tournament. So glad that that one turned out the way it did. And all these guys anxious to see, people in place waiting to see how it turned out on the lake. Today. I think the most surprising thing in this Bassmaster Classic with the brutal, frigid temps we had coming in, in a nutshell, Lake Hartwell is the one that showed up most so far in this Classic. Here we go, everyone in place. Time for MC Dave Mercer to get this place rocking. Arizona, here comes Brent Hyde. 14 
10 is what he's looking for. He's got all spotted bass at 15.7 to start the day. 14 pounds even, and B Height is winning the fight. I'm excited to go fishing tomorrow. Today went, went, it was a little bit better, a little smoother than yesterday. I got off to a good start and, uh, you know, just looking forward to catching some of those giant Lake Hartwell spotted bass. Here he is, Ski Reese. Fishing his 15th Classic, took a win at the Classic back in 2009. Two fish today, but two of the right ones. Six pounds, 15 ounces. Skeet Reese with just two fish moves into eighth place with 27 pounds and an ounce. Today, you gotta be frustrated with just those two bites. What changed out there? That's a really good question, Dave. Um, I went out there this morning full of confidence, and I fished confident all day long. I really thought that I was going to put myself in position to to win this tournament, and uh, and I lost one fish. That was it. And you know, I caught those two there. I lost one between four and five, and that's going to be the one that's going to haunt me right now to keep me in contention. Here comes Keith Combs. Had 18 pounds, eight ounces yesterday on day two comes back with just two fish three pounds 14 ounces with 22 pounds six ounces keith combs currently moves into 20th place not a lot of bites but good bites yesterday i had five and most days of practice i only had you know seven to nine bites so it's not a lot of fish but they're good ones and if i can make it to tomorrow i'm gonna adjust i'm not gonna go out there and fish for two all day that's a fact yeah raise the roof here we go from donald's south carolina casey ashley 14 pounds 11 ounces casey ashley moves into fifth place went out there today and i i, I did what i wanted to do you know i still i got a limit early and I went and tried to catch a big fish, and it, and it just didn't work out. I don't know what's going on, but I do know that I have eliminated what I've been trying to do to catch a big fish. So tomorrow, I'm changing the whole ball game. You know, it's going to be a great day tomorrow. we got the best weather you could ask for on the lake. I mean, it's going to be nasty, raining, cold. Uh, tomorrow's going to be good. I think the weights are going to go up. You know, I told you yesterday they're going to go up today, and that's what happened. Here's Randy Howell. Randy Howell looks for six pounds and seven ounces to take the lead. 15 pounds and six ounces. Randy Howell moves into fourth place and will be rolling out on championship Sunday. 30 pounds and 11 ounces and you're in fourth place. It's well documented. You were in 11th place last year at this time and you won that deal. You're in fourth place now. It should be a walk in the park for you tomorrow, right? Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And I had, I've never been in fourth going into the last day of the Classic. It's pretty cool. I'm, I'm so thankful because now I know I don't have as much work to do as far as catching up work goes. But I still got a lot of work to do because I'm, man, I'm so thankful that I got that five pounder late today because I, you know, it would have, I would have been right there in the mix with everybody else, you know, in the teens or twenties, and that five pounder made a big difference. From Pitts Grove, New Jersey, Mike. Liberty Flop, what do we got? 16 pounds and 9 ounces! Iconelli moves into second place! Like a better day today, 16 pounds and 9 ounces, and boy, boy, with just 15 anglers left to go, you're in second place. And dude, you got a shot at your second Bassmaster Classic title. It's exciting, uh, I tell you, you know, you, you dream about this, you dream of every day about uh, weighing in and, and, and this fun, in a crowd like this and have a big bag of fish. And uh, man, if I have a shot, put me, about, put me about two to four pounds out of first going into tomorrow. And look out, baby, look out. From Lake Havasu City, Arizona, here comes Dean Rojas. 10, 10, 10 pounds, 7 ounces. Dean Rojas moves into second place with 31 pounds and 9 ounces. I fished 100% yesterday and today. I caught, I've caught everything that's bit. So I'm proud of that bag today. That's all I could do, but I got a brand new day tomorrow. It's going to be a shootout tomorrow. I can't wait. I can't wait to get out there. I'm, I'm relaxed. I'm having fun. Got my work cut out for tomorrow, but uh, 
no doubt in my mind I can do it. From Emory, Texas, here comes former champ, Takahiro Omori. Looking for 14, 8, 16 pounds, 11 ounces. With 31 pounds, 11 ounces, Takahiro moves into the lead once again at the Geico Bassmaster Classic, becoming your Geico Daily Leader. When I won the 2004, it's been like 11 years, so number two is great now. Is this the time? I've got enough fish left for Championship Sunday. Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I hope so. Tale told at the weigh-in. Welcome back to the Toyota Bassmaster Studios. And Dean Rojas hanging in there, lost his top spot to somebody who, as predicted, like you said, doing something completely different from day one. And really, I don't know that we've ever covered a class, not even a classic, really an Elite Series event that has had so many techniques with your leaderboard from rip wrap fishing to boat dock fishing, drop shotting deep, Casey Ashley throwing a little underspin. This Bassmaster Classic is going to come down to the best laid game plan. It could be completely different. Day three, warmer still with a chance of rain as well. Takahiro Mori trying to hang on and win his second Classic when we see you next time on the third and final day of the Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro. Ah, three pounder out there, baby. <laughs> Number four, all right.